My name is Vlad Petri. I'm a Romanian filmmaker. Uh, and the name of uh, my film is called Between Revolutions. And uh, it is selected to be part in this year's Berlinale Forum section. Nu cred că revoluția a fost în zadar. Am văzut atâta speranță, atâta bucurie pe chipurile oamenilor. Cu toții am crezut că e un nou început, mai bun, mai demn. Încerc să nu mă gândesc la ce e mai rău. Încerc încă să fiu optimistă. Non من به خلاف خانم هم منم مایلم البته امروز در رفراندوم شرکت کنیم ولی من تصمیمم رو میدونم و به جمهوری اسلامی رای خواهم Hello and welcome to the 37th Teddy Award. My name is Jan Felix Wutig and today I'm here with director Vlad Petri to talk about his film Intra Revoluch Between Revolutions. Hey Vlad, pleased to have you here. Nice meeting you. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, thank you so much for taking the time and thank you for Between Revolutions. I, I found it to be a very intricate and and moving and sometimes unsettling film um about the letter exchange between two women roughly between the Iranian and the Romanian revolution um maybe you could start with telling us what idea you had about the film and how it the the idea for the film came to pass uh the first uh, idea came after a discussion i had with my mother she told me um, many things about her student years in romania during communist time mm -hmm. and she told me about uh, other foreign students that she met at her university and i was really curious because romania was a very closed country and um, due to to political circumstances uh, more students were coming from the middle east and from non-aligned countries mm -hmm. so i was curious from people from the middle east how did they see this this closed uh, eastern european country and because my mother studied in a in a city far away from me i was also curious how her, her life was so this was the really the the first uh, idea uh, with which i started the film and after that uh, we did research about about uh, students uh, foreign students in romania and uh, especially women because uh, i was i was really into looking into comparing these two these two political systems that have been through this uh, i think one of the greatest revolutions in the 20th century mm -hmm. the iranian revolution of 79 with all the hopes and all the beliefs that turned really really dark afterwards mm -hmm. and romania during communism with the anti ceausescu revolution and i was curious watching archives and all this male dominated propaganda i was curious how the life of women would fit here mm -hmm. and how would it be to tell a story about these these two women that have similar lives in these two regimes yes yeah and very much so um it it, it comes across how they feel and how their lives change during the revolutionary times that they lived through um what could you find in the in the comparison of those two how how were they similar and how how did they um uh, what were the differences kind of how did you feel that they that they were on a level um i think th there was uh, 
uh, for me, these characters, in a way, they look, uh, it's like the same reflection in a mirror. They're, they're very similar in many things, but at the same time, there are differences. Zahra comes from an intellectual left-wing background, coming to this communist Romania and believing all this utopia of the 70s. And she's inspired by what she sees here. And she quits her studies to take part in the Iranian revolution in this amazing event. So she's she's influence of her friend of Maria in Romania and of the ideas she encountered here, and through the letters they they exchange things from their personal lives. They they all the time they go back to the past. They move forward, and uh, I think it's really interesting how 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 their story and their their their, their relation develop. And I worked with uh, with uh, one of the most uh, important contemporary writers in Romania, Lavinia Braniște. She's a feminist, and her books are centered on female characters, so she could give a voice to these two women. And mm -hmm. we also worked with a writer and a consultant from Iran to really balance these two stories. Yeah, because I, I've specifically found that a lot of the strength of the film comes from the script comes from the letter exchange of these two women and how it it interacts with the images but specifically how well these two writers were able to kind of conjure up what it must have felt during those times to 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 be in those countries and to live under those regimes and and to live through these changing times um could you tell us a little bit about how much of the writing was done um, simply as an act of, of, of creation and how much was taken from maybe letter exchanges that had already had actually happened? It's uh, regarding the letters, I can say that it's it's more fictional than yeah. documentary. It is it is based on the letters and on the information we found at the secret police. But Lavinia Braniște uh, contribution is, is immense here. And um, I think she's there in, in many ways. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, um, as I said before, I think this, this mirror thing, it's really something that interested me because in a way it's a comparison between Romania and Iran in terms of, a, of, of the political regimes. And it's also a comparison between Maria and Zahra, the two characters of the film. And also uh, it's an interchange between two, two writers, two feminist poets from Romania and Iran, Farouk Farukzad and Nina Kassian. So there are texts and there are moments when they, they, they quote, uh, the characters of the film quote these two, these two writers. So I think it's a melange, it's a mix between fiction and documentary. For example, when they, when they, uh, uh, they are sending um, fragments of, of, of poems to each other. It's an intervention by Lavinia Braniște. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to say exactly in percentage where fiction ends yeah. and documentary steps in. Um, a lot of the film kind of portrays this, this relationship that the women have, the affection they feel for each other um, and things that are, you know, that are portrayed in how they dealt with each other and things that they maybe do not show or n do not portray in the letters. So things they had to hide maybe in their relationship. And it, it is a relationship that can be very easily read as, as, as a queer relationship that has to be boiled down in the letters so as to not to show what their relationship was really like. Maybe you can tell us in your own words how you conceived the connection between those two women. Uh, I'm very much interested to let the audiences come with their own ideas for this. So I think it's not a clear line. It's a very, very strong relation between them. And But for me, it's really hard to define uh, uh, the border uh, where where physical love starts. Mm -hmm. So I think the audience can can fill all these gaps. And there are of course uh, many uh, many hidden things in the relation. And um, I think um, uh, I, I I really wanted this to 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 be open. Mm -hmm. So so they can. Uh, 
uh, I, I didn't want to, to say it, it is this intense or, or lesser intense because there are moments when, when they really become one. It's, 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 it's a struggle for them to be united through yes. these letters because the revolution in Iran is it's separating them and for the whole years they want to be again together mm -hmm. in, 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 in so many ways. Yes, very much so. And you can... Sorry. I uh, no no. I I think it's also interesting because in in Romania homosexuality was forbidden. It was Article number two hundred, uh, when people couldn't uh, meet, uh, couldn't have uh, uh, homosexual relations, and uh, they were uh, they were uh, uh, followed by police and everything. So I think it's it's also. Um, very, very courageous and interesting to think that it might be in uh, this kind of relation between them. Yes, very much so. And I, I've thought that the, the writers actually, they, they had a very keen sense of um, the reality of homosexual or queer uh, people during those times in, in building in those, those certain details in which you can can actually read uh, a queer relationship and also yeah. um in a larger feminist sense you can you can see kind of like a, a male dominated um expectation for example to marry into in 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 those texts so in in that regard they were very very multi-layered -la and 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 very um interesting in that in that regard um, yeah, they, they are fighting against a male orientated society and they find the deepest connection only between them. So that's the thing that Lavinia was really, Lavinia Branch was really careful on finding all the details and also to have in mind what could have, have happened if, if a, relay, a physical relation between them would be discovered by the secret police, either in Romania or even in, in, yeah. in, in Italy. And uh, th there's quite a um, development going on in the film in, as, as the re revolutions progress and become more violent or the, the, the situation in Romania becomes more dire. Um, how did you work with the writers to kind of compose that development in the sense of the, of the story of the film? We were also inspired by by books uh, by uh, Iranian uh, writers like uh, Azar Nafisi, uh, and we uh, read a lot uh, about Iranian history. I'm also um, very interested into Iran. I traveled there. I'm uh, I also have have friends, and I I had consultants for this film, and in a way the the story of Zahra follows the story of many Iranian women from optimist to deception. Uh, she was close to her father, uh, being an intellectual and left-wing activist, and uh, uh, things happened to, to him during the film, and he's, she's more secluded, she's, she's, she's more alone, and the Iran-Iraq war steps in, and we, we were really... Um, following like a general line and uh, and the possible story that happened to many women that uh, were more revolutionary, let's say, that wanted a different society than the one it was promised by Khomeini. And in Romania, as I said at the beginning, I was inspired by the life of my mother and the life of her friends. Uh, and I remember the 80s, I was a little child, and I remember the sheer joy of the Romanian revolution mm -hmm. that we really hoped, like the Iranians, that it will be a big, big change and um, women like my mother will have more rights and people will have more freedom. But uh, as we could see, the 90s brought, brought a really savage capitalist to Eastern Europe and yeah. things weren't quite so so light and so bright. Yeah. And I think that really uh, comes across very well in the sense that you can really feel that those stories that are being portrayed are lived in, that they are actually part of an actual life experience of somebody. Um, one thing that I really liked was how the images interacted with the texts. So how the images interacted with different parts of the letters that are being read. Um, because at times I felt that that certain images, for example, uh, in the uh, yeah, well, in the uh, um, 
in a swimming area you had different people in bathing suits kind of commenting on the text that was being read um, and at other times it seemed to kind of expand what the meaning of the words were um, could you tell us a little bit how you composed the image on on the texts uh, yeah it was a long period of research i worked for around uh, three years on this film uh, uh, meaning the whole production and post-production I've been searching a lot in the archives and all the time after after editing, I changed uh, the direction of uh, the criteria of selection, let's say, and the text uh, worked with the images. We started with a text and then it was double editing, text editing, and at the same time, image editing. We started with a lot of propaganda because we wanted from the beginning to be a critique of the propaganda, which is still is in the film. So for example, the, the sequence you mentioned, actually it's uh, really unedited. I mean, all the, the women with the swimming suits, it's just this piece of propaganda with the music from there. It's a piece, uh, Ray Conniff music from the sixties from US used by a communist country. Um, uh, propaganda machine so it's really interesting they talk about liberal <laughs> capitalistic values uh, uh, embodied in this communist yeah. uh, uh, manufacturing manufactured images so but by uh, uh, step by step uh, uh, we also we also search for more intimate personal images because we wanted to give body to these two women it's really important to feel them and to feel uh, them uh, uh, contradicting the propaganda, but also sometimes to be with them, you know, going mm -hmm. with a train or going to this carousel sequence and be there with Maria. You can think she's one of them. So I think it's a, um, I think it's a, it's a mix between uh, between contesting the propaganda and uh, not contesting their daily lives, finding their their own ways of living through these uh, uh, hard hard times. Yes. And I mean, you must have spent quite a while in going through all these archives or, or actually uh, approaching people, I guess, f f to to show show you their, their, their private footage of what was going on speci specifically in, in Iran during the revolution during those times, because some of the footage is like really, you know, that that isn't states made footage that is just from a personal perspective how did you find all that footage is i guess my question it was it was not easy at all i i had a very involved and good a very good creative producer monica lazuran gorgan she has experience of finding things and putting together the best teams the best crews and uh, fortunately, after many tries, we found uh, a very dedicated person in Iran, our co-producer, which has to remain anonymous due, due to security reasons, because that person outsourced uh, uh, amazing archives from Iran, but uh, the situation there is not, uh, is not very good regarding this it's a it's a it's a government that is really paranoid on how things are shown in in in, in art in general not only in films so unfortunately we couldn't credit that person but mm -hmm. uh, um, the the person really really helped us and in Romania it was easier because I live in Romania but also I searched a lot. Uh, we have archives from the National Archive on, on 35 millimeter film. We have archives from all the um, uh, Communist Student Association, uh, Ioana Gapi archive, which is an amazing archive uh, uh, given to us by his, his daughter. He was an important uh, filmmaker from Romania and also different other sources. And I think that really all all of these aspects, all of the different sources of information, also of, of, of footage and material, really came together really beautifully to, to create this film. Um, Vlad, I want to thank you again. Uh, that's it for me. Um, and I just hope that uh, Between Revolutions is going to be a great success at the Berlinale. Thank you so much. And thank please... You come to, to, to see the film uh, and I'm saying this to 
to, to your peers, to your colleagues, and to other people that are interested to see this film. Thank you.